El Paso, that massacre, that terror attack on, on the 3rd of August, really forced me, uh, whether I wanted to or not, to see things far more clearly, to connect those dots that I just did, to speak honestly about it, regardless of the political consequences or the price that I pay as a candidate, and then to define the decisive action that we will take. So, yes, universal background checks, red flag laws. I remember this one gentleman, Lonnie, he said, you've stepped in it now. And, and all of us, you know, look us in the eye and, and tell us that you're with us through to the very end. Now, whether you're the nominee or you're not the nominee, whether you stay in politics or you do something else, I want to know from you, and I want you to make this commitment to me right now, that you're with us to the very end. And, and I told him, I am. Lonnie, I am. To every single person who is out there, I am. To all of you watching right now, I, I am. Um, and uh, I feel that responsibility, but I also feel that opportunity to, to say things that need to be said that we've never spoken before in our politics. To say, this is f***ed up when seven people are killed in Midland and Odessa. Our political language, our rhetoric... Our politics is insufficient to the challenges that we face right now. That's clear given the situation that we're in. So, yes, I feel that responsibility, but yes, I feel empowered by those who want me to speak for them, and I will for as long as there's breath in my lungs. But there are a lot of Republicans that quietly, um, for years now, uh, have been voicing their discontent and their concern about things that the president does, immigration, you name it. But many of them, unlike Senator Flake, won't rise to the occasion and talk about it. And, but this will be different. This will actually be a legal proceeding. And I think so much of it will depend on what comes over from the House. I personally think that that document is a smoking gun. Do you want to abolish the Electoral College? Uh, yes. I mean, do I think it's a reality that we're going to get all this done with all the interstate thing? Um, very difficult. Um, but I don't think we can keep having this situation where the majority of Americans are voting for one candidate and the other one is president. I have said more than once, I wish the rhetoric from the president were different. That being said, I think compared to the Obama administration, we are much stronger dealing with our enemies than we should be. Our language isn't but our substantive actions are. See, in the same way that if Barack Obama got on the call with Rouhani and said, I'd like you to do us this favor, you would recognize immediately that that's an act. So look, government leaders have conversations with other government leaders, and they say all sorts of things. Um, I will say I'm very glad that the president and the administration released the transcript. But, but I'll point out also, you know, you know look, part, part of the allegations concern Vice President Biden Look, I think it would also make sense for the administration to release transcripts of any conversations Biden had with Ukraine. Do the same standard, release Biden's transcripts and Trump's transcripts, and, and we can see if, if there was anything illegitimate or not. We can see those conversations as well. I don't think there's some huge latent anti-immigrant view in this country. I think it's something that Trump and Fox News and, and to their everlasting disgrace, the people that have paid for political ads that serve the Republican National Committee, you know, have sort of been foisted on top of this country. And it's doing huge damage to who we are and, and what our best traditions are. And, you know, I wish my grandparents were here to see it, actually, because there would be hell to pay uh, if they were still here. I've never met people with stronger accents uh, in this country than they, and I've never met people that were greater patriots than they were. And... Um, you know, they got a lot out of America, and they gave a lot to America, and that's the way this is supposed to work. I, the next president has an opportunity to try and return to trying to bring people together. That's the easy part. The harder part is that we need long-term institutional changes to Congress to actually foster more bipartisanship. And I think of a, a couple specifically. Number one, uh, what... Democrats in the House have already proposed under H.R. 1, which is to change the way that we do 
redistricting from the politicians picking their people to the people actually getting to pick their politicians because you have a commission style or bipartisan or neutral style of redistricting in all 50 states. Right now, only about 15 states have that. The Republicans don't want to work with the Democrats, and the Democrats may not want to work with the Republicans because if you do, you're handing a political win to whoever is in the office or is the executive. Democrats do an infrastructure plan with Donald Trump. Donald Trump has a political win that he can use to his advantage. How do you break that cycle? I think that you can break that cycle by, I mean, I think there are two ways to break that cycle. Number one, you have to be willing to jump over the filibuster. That the filibuster is nowhere in the Constitution. So get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe that both parties have already played games with the filibuster when it was convenient for them. Um, that's caused a lot of the gridlock in Washington. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.